This is another gut slash teardown video, this time of a dead CyberPower CPS 525SL uninterruptible power supply. These are just the backs of the receptacle strips, which true to this, true to form this being a cheap uh, Chinese consumer grade product, are just a bunch of little brass strips held in place with uh, these uh, plastic retaining things. Another thing to note is that the main input wiring is, of course, your normal uh, black hot white neutral green ground. The output wiring being of co uh, for the, the um, uh, inverter only receptacles, because this has um, surge only and it's got surge and inverter. The output is yellow hot blue neutral green ground, which except for the green not being yellow striped, are the Chinese wiring colors. This being a Chinese product, of course, it's still somewhat unusual. More commonly, you see uh, the stupid European wiring color code. Now, of course, the reason that they put the uh, yellow stripe on it is because green with no stripe is an L2 hot. Yes. Really. Uh, anyways. Um... This is a dead unit, of course, the reason why I'll get to in a bit. But the back of the case might give some indication it being melted and the label on it being discolored. You can also see a problem right there, of course. But, anyways, it's a typical transformer type uh, uninterruptible power supplies, virtually all of them are. At least I've yet to see a switch mode type. Uh, inverter in an uninterruptible power supply, but they probably do exist. Uh, this is the main circuit board, the stuff on which I'll get into in a minute. These are the connections for the battery. It was, it's a standard 12 volt 7 ampere uh, valve regulated lead acid. Uh, dead, of course, bulging sides, but then if, if you've seen one of those, you've seen a million, so it's not all that super interesting. Uh, there's a pair of heat sinks, one for each of the two uh, end taps on the transformer primary winding each of which has a couple of MOSFETs on it <coughs> and then for the control circuitry there is an ST microelectronics 62T10CB or 10C6 that is an 8-bit uh, microcontroller and of course, even without looking it up, you'd be able to tell because of the ceramic resonator right next to it, since many of, the, many of these things don't have or they don't use the internal oscillators. And there's a couple of uh, opto-isolators for connecting to the serial port, some various other passes around it. And then the only other integrated circuit that I can see so far is a, um, also by ST Microelectronics, a um, LM324 quad operational amplifier. Nothing fancy. And there's an EL LM three one seven T. That's almost certainly the five the uh, logic supply to this, which is probably five volts, even though this microcontroller is good anywhere from three volts to six volts. Uh, then there's a beeper, a couple of switching relays um, for uh, transferring over the uh, re the inverter receptacles to the transformer when the thing's operating in uninterruptible power supply mode. The um, output transformer, which is somewhat to be, uh, or it's a bit on the small side for a um, 525 volt ampere 300 watt under, um, inverter, but it's only going to be used for a couple of minutes, so they probably figured that they can get away with that. And this is pretty much what I bought this for because this transformer I'm going to be using is a um, an experimental transformer type inverter and the reason why it was dead the charging transformer as you can see the at least one of the windings has gone bad because the core or the bobbin should be kind of like a um, a stale cheese type uh, orangish brown color not this and you can see if the white balance would not 
go crazy. That the, um, anyways, you can see that some of the windings have shorted out internally, and uh, the it's pretty much dead. And there's a couple of these, uh, so that that's pretty much why the thing was dead. Is that just burn up? But then again, made in China, so quality is somewhat crap. That's to be expected. Then there's a couple of uh, barristers for um, surge suppression. Some uh, capacitors. Uh, again, for, well, those are for QRM suppression and stuff. There's a 40 ampere ATC fuse. as a master master overcurrent protection. There's a code on the board. Week three of 2000 or week six of 2003. Too. There's also space for a second fuse because sometimes for bigger versions of this they probably have another fuse in there. Sometimes they'll use a pair of 20 ampere fuses instead of 140 ampere one. I'll just set the board up so that they can use whatever. And yeah, this is January of 2003, February of 2003, thereabouts, according to the code on the inside. Most likely January. So, uh, the week 44, 2002, right, um, one of these caps, uh, week 7 of 2003, so it's probably February or March thereabouts, and these things are off. And then, of course, there's a separate PCB for the idiot lights, which is, of course, somewhat common, the weird, but then again, I was just etch that on a bit of uh, excess PV of excess uh, PCB that would otherwise just be scrap, and it makes it at least somewhat easier to uh, machine assemble these things, or at least mount the boards, or just mount the LEDs, mount the wires on the board, rather than having to manually solder the um, leads onto uh, onto the uh, LED uh, pins. But yeah. burnt. Oh, and these are, uh, it also is a uh, phone line protection capability, so there's a couple of uh, RJ uh, 11 or RJ 12 connectors on the end. Uh, 